Today I'm bringing you some updates on what's happening with wrapped Bitcoin and major DeFi platforms that are shunning it. Also, the new development from Coinbase, a new announcement from BlackRock, and someone please tell Indodax just to stop. We have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's get into it. So first, let's talk about wrapped Bitcoin and how this wrapped Bitcoin works. And, and the idea behind it is that you can utilize your Bitcoin holdings. You can, you can have the benefit of exposure to Bitcoin while at the same time using it in DeFi platforms, most popularly on the Ethereum blockchain, for example. So what users can do is they can either just trade their Bitcoin for wrapped Bitcoin, but to leverage the value and relative stability of Bitcoin with the added capabilities of smart contracts and things like DeFi, decentralized lending and borrowing, or depositing into liquidity pools to earn rewards that way. But what is involved in this process is a custodian is involved to store and manage the Bitcoin deposited to be then transferred one to one and issued as wrapped Bitcoin. Now you don't have to go through this specific process to get your hands on things like wrapped Bitcoin. You can just purchase them on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, for example. But recently the company managing wrapped Bitcoin called Bit go has announced they're going to try to decentralize this custodial process for the Bitcoin involved in wrapped Bitcoin by inviting another company called BitGlobal, which has a lot of ties to Justin Sun. And Justin Sun is the founder behind the Tron network and the Tron blockchain. He paid millions of dollars to have lunch with Warren Buffett. Uh, he's, he's a very controversial figure in this space and left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths for good reason. And some of the moves that he's chosen to make uh, in his own crypto journey, very publicly, very expensively, very centralized, and very questionable. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, MakerDAO, which has also recently rebranded to Sky, uh, has taken this move that Rap Bitcoin has decided to make, and they're considering putting it up for, it is now up for a, a vote, a governance vote, that they might altogether deny Wrapped Bitcoin on their DeFi platform. MakerDAO is one of the largest and oldest DeFi platforms out there. And Rep Bitcoin is one of the popular options that people use on MakerDAO. So if you are one of these people who are using Rep Bitcoin on MakerDAO for things like lending or for uh, liquidity providing, know that as of that, as soon as September 26th, this could be put up to a vote and that could be changed very quickly. So I'm gonna provide a link down below in the video description for the Twitter profile you should follow to stay up to date on that vote and the processes that will follow uh, if you if you are under that. So let's, in, in the same vein here, we're gonna take a look at a new development from Coinbase and their Coinbase wrapped Bitcoin or Coinbase Bitcoin. Uh, little c, little b, capital BTC. Uh, they, it's their own version of a wrapped Bitcoin, basically. It's the same concept, same idea, but Coinbase is claiming that now, finally, you can use Bitcoin on DeFi platforms, but it's not real Bitcoin. You're not using the Bitcoin network. You, it's not real Bitcoin. It is a tokenized version of Bitcoin. It is a derivative of Bitcoin. And Coinbase is leveraging what's happened with Rep Bitcoin and the controversy with Justin Sun and basically saying they would never give up custody of the, of the Bitcoin, certainly not to make it more decentralized. Uh, because remember, Coinbase is not only a centralized exchange, they are the custody of choice for a number of different institutions, most notably, I think like nine out of the 11 uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs that are now available in the US, they all use Coinbase as their custodian. So imagine the information that Coinbase now has at their fingertips in terms of tracking, tracing, collecting, because they love to go, uh, they love to impart KYC, know your customer information, and collect as much information on their users as possible, connecting that data with the movements of cryptocurrencies moving into and out of that centralized exchange. And now they found a way to incentivize users to filter through Coinbase in a seamless manner. They can deposit Bitcoin onto Coinbase and then from there directly making a withdrawal 
from Coinbase, their Bitcoin, into a very specific uh, con smart contract address, which would convert their coins one to one from Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin, to Coinbase's wrapped Bitcoin so that people can utilize their Bitcoin on really cool, innovative DeFi platforms and earn more interest there as well. But just know that they are collecting this data and it might be really seamless and easy for you, but there's always an end game. Also bringing it back to one of the big players that use Coinbase as their custodial solution, BlackRock has come out to say that Bitcoin is an excellent hedge against global financial disorders. <laughs> Sounds like it's a medical, uh, medical diagnosis. Larry Fink even went further now saying that Bitcoin could serve as a decent global monetary alternative an alternative to traditional fiat currencies. Someone needs to tell Larry Fink that yeah, he's praising Bitcoin, but his own product that he's that he's selling, his ETF, is not a form of money, is not a monetary unit that you can transact in. Uh, it is a derivative of Bitcoin that is just representing the price change of it. You can't actually use it like cash. You can't use it in exchange or, or in replacement of any fiat currency. Uh, there's a big disconnect there. But of course, Larry Fink, knowing that him even just saying this is enough to Possibly, maybe, obviously, he was ready to pump the price of Bitcoin, otherwise he wouldn't be speaking so highly of it. Uh, and that would directly benefit him, his pockets, and those who are investing in the ETF. Not to mention those who are also just holding spot Bitcoin, the real deal, in self-custody. You guys are the real winners, and I hope you know that. But the real, the, we have to make sure that this is known, that... His saying that Bitcoin as a hedge against global financial disorders and it's acting as a global monetary alternative, his Bitcoin ETF is not that. Bitcoin itself functioning on the Bitcoin network that is a peer-to-peer -peer network that allows you to send Bitcoin to anyone you want for whatever reason you want, whenever you want. There is no bank holidays uh, and it's 24-7. That is a very beautiful thing and it is censorship resistance, which is probably the most beautiful thing that will continue to prove to be more and more important as time moves on. Okay, now lastly, we have to have an update on Indodax because I read today their attempt at trying to remedy the situation. There was indeed a $21.995 million, uh, $21 million hack on Indodax and the exchange is still down, the app is still down, but their Instagram and their Twitter is still running fine. In fact, their way to compensate those who have lost funds on their exchange sounds incredibly scammy and it sounds like engagement farming and it sounds horrible. So someone tell Indodax to stop because currently they're handing out about 3 million rupiah, which is about $200 every hour to three winners who have successfully participated in their competition of comments. So basically, if you are one of three winners, you could win $200 if you participate well enough on their social media accounts. This does not sound like they're making anyone whole. It, make, it sounds like they are engagement farming and they're making this sound incredibly scammy. And I think it is scammy. I think we're gonna call it like it is. Also another note, they were very quick to label Lazarus, the hacking group from North Korea, as the culprits behind this hack. Uh, who knows who's really behind it. That I think that's just an easy villain at this point to point the finger at. Maybe Indodax itself was just draining its own funds and now they're trying to capitalize even more on this hack by trying to draw people into their social media accounts rather than trying to uh, you know, illuminate what really happened behind the hack, providing any kind of post-mortem on how this hack occurred. No, they're trying to get people to like, comment, and subscribe on their social medias. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you found it to be informative. All jokes aside, I hope you guys do find this channel to be informative. And if you like what we do here, share it out with other people so they can learn what's really happening in the crypto space and what's really important to be paying attention to. If what we offer on this channel is not enough for you, please check out learningcrypto.com. It's an excellent resource and I don't think you'll regret it. That's it for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye guys.